again voted number one audience participation show in the annual awards made by newspapers and radio editors, columnists and critics conducted by Motion Picture Daily in behalf of Fame Magazine. And next to Bing was voted number two master of ceremonies. No. But with us, he's just that dozy guy, Ralph Truth or Consequences Edwards. Well, thank you very much, Otto Wilcox. And greetings, party players. I certainly want to thank the radio editors and critics for voting Truth or Consequences number one again. Daddy's proud of his baby. And Harlow, I don't know, I feel so battered and bruised tonight. How come, Ralph? Because you've been practicing for your appearance on the Eddie Cantor Show Christmas night? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really bruised. I, I does my shirt and does doesn't do everything. Oh, yes, it does, Ralph. No, sir, you have to take your shirt off before you throw it in the washer. Oh, Understand? Oh, Am I bruised? Oh. But I'm happy with all, and I'm clean, too. Well, this is our Christmas party tonight, our Truth of Consequence Christmas party, and uh, I can't wait to get it going. Speaking of Christmas, there are only three more shopping days till Christmas, not much time left to buy your Christmas seals. You all know that the purchase of Christmas seals is to help the fight against tuberculosis. As a matter of fact, we have about $50 worth of Christmas seals right here with us. I'm going to give these Christmas seals to any lady, I'll give them to any lady in the audience who wants them. Now, she can keep the Christmas seals if she will do one thing. That is to prominently display these Christmas seals all the way home tonight and shout from time to time, I have my Christmas seals, why don't you buy yours? Now, what lady will do that? Johnny Pollock, turn on the microphone. We'll go right down to the audience. Here are a bunch of them here. Here's a lady here. I'll, I'll interview someone. What is your name, please? Mrs. Martinson, Jr. Where are you from, Jr.? Oakland. Uh, Oakland, California. Oh, and a finer town there isn't. What is your name, please? Mrs. Ray Greenwell, San Diego. Yes, but are you staying up here tonight? Yes, I am. You're going to be in town tonight? Yes, I am. In Los Angeles and Hollywood. What is your name, please? Rose Downing. Yes, well, you'll get up again, Rose. Don't you worry about it. What is your name again, Mrs. Greenwell? Mrs. Ray Greenwell. All right. Now, uh, you, you will take these Christmas seals home and wave them and say, uh, I have my Christmas seals uh, why don't you buy yours? Will you do that? Yes, I will. Well, that's wonderful of you to talk up the sale of Christmas seals. Mrs. Green... Greenwell. Greenwell from San Diego. Now, here are $50 worth of Christmas seals. We uh, want you to shout all the way, I have my Christmas seals, why don't you buy yours? As a matter of fact, uh, they're worth more than $50. The Christmas seals that I want you to take home are these two live seals that are coming on stage now. <laughs> Will you take the seals home with you, Mrs. Green? My brother-in-law let me. <laughs> oh, you're living with your... No, we're going to stay all night at his house. Where's his brother-in-law here? Brother-in-law, will you let her take him home with him? Well, sure, he says. All right. Uh, uh, how are you going to get home, I wonder? Well, we hit, we're in his car. Oh, that'll be cozy, all right. Well, I'm sure all the, Look at it roll over up here, one of the seals. Uh, they're Mary and Jolly are their names. I'm sure all the people who pass you or meet you will know to buy Christmas seals after they've seen you, Miss Greenwell. Incidentally, if you do this, we'll give you $50 to buy Christmas seals with. And uh, we also... Quiet, Jolly. Mary, be quiet. We also will will have for you this 14 carat, 21 jewel, full of... Uh, Wristwatch. I thought it was going to hurt over that. Now he's going to be restored. All right, Mr. Ballard. The owners will collect the seals in the morning. I hope they're happy in your bathtub tonight. Right. Thank you very much and good night. Good luck. Oh, here's a big red box of does, too. Try does for your dishes. You'll find does does everything in the dish pan, too. All right, now we get going along here. Be sure, folks, to listen for the walking man. Who's the walking man? He's coming this way with a new gigantic prize contest. More later about that. Right now, we've got Christmas spirit in a box. Believe it or not, back in New York, right now there's a great big box, and if the things in it don't add up to real Christmas spirit, then I'll settle for whatever they do add up to. Remember last week we asked you to write your Christmas wish for the world to Merry Christmas... Box 400, Radio City Station, New York 20, New York. We told you, you weren't going to get anything for your trouble. No prizes, not a thing. Well, so far, about 42,000 people, you too, I hope, 
have taken the trouble to do something for nothing. That's a mighty good-sized crowd, and the thing they've done is mighty good-sized, too. We haven't finished counting the letters yet, and uh, we haven't sorted the different wishes, but next Saturday, uh, we hope to be able to tell you, on truth or consequences, what the top ten wishes are. Meanwhile, the Christmas wish to the world idea is growing by leaps and bounds. On Christmas Day... Seven daytime radio programs are going to devote their entire programs to dramatizing some of the wishes you sent in. Now, let's see, Harlow, where's that list of programs? Oh, here it is. Uh, Big Sister, Ma Perkins, Young Dr. Malone, The Guiding Light, Life Can Be Beautiful, Pepper Young's Family, and The Right to Happiness. Now, you've still got time to send in your Christmas wish to the world. Just answer this question. If you had the power, what would you give the world for Christmas? Keep your answer short, one word if possible. Send your answer to Merry Christmas, Box 400, Radio City Station, New York 20, New York. Not later than midnight, December 25th, please, so we can get them all counted and sorted in time to give you the results next Saturday night. Say, Ralph, 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 uh, Santa Claus left this Christmas present for you. For me, Harlow? Oh, gosh, that cheery big red box, it does, really does look Christmassy, doesn't it? It sure gets in the spirit on wash day. Does is one soap that does everything in the family wash. Why, it does gets towels and linens as white as... Fresh fallen snow? You bet. They gleam with the true whiteness you want. Does is famous for whiteness. And just a short washer run with does gets grease-spotted work clothes shining clean. Yet does leaves the newest colors in your wash bright and perky as... A a wreath of holly? You said it, Ralph. And does is safer for those colors than any other leading package soap sold for wash day. Does really is different. Even makes more suds, ounce for ounce. They're real soap suds, too. Believe me, the soap shortage taught folks there's no substitute for does. Why, it moves out of the store so fast these days... You gotta do your does shopping early, eh, Harlow? Right. So, folks, first chance you get, get does. From the roughest and toughest to the whitest and brightest, does, does everything. Right you are, Mr. O'Connor. Yes, it's here again. For the past weeks, you've been going over that gift list and maybe most of your purchases there, but now on the threshold of the big week of the year, with wreaths in the window, holly on the door, with a jolly old man with the long white whiskers fattening up his reindeer for the big trip down... There's no denying it, Christmas is here. And come Thursday morning, the bells will be ringing in all the churches, the kids will be laughing in all the houses, and most everyone in his own way will be celebrating the reason for Christmas, the doctrine of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And we got to thinking what an ironic thing it is that many of those who helped give peace the real meaning of the word will be doing their celebrating from a bed or a wheelchair in a veteran's hospital. And I wonder if each one of them can know and feel in their heart just how grateful we are. So, fellows in hospitals all over the country, this next consequence is for you. As a matter of fact, you might even be the contestant we have for it. Here we go to a veteran's hospital, and will the fellow whose name I call please say hello back to me, although there may be no microphone in sight, you see. Hello? Hello? Hubert Smith. Hello. Hi, shipfitter third class Hubert Smith. This is Ralph Edwards at Truth or Consequences. Now, uh, tell our Christmas party listeners what hospital you're in, Hubert. Long Beach Naval Hospital. Yes, sir. Well, uh, all the gang around there? You bet. Uh, where's your home, Hubert? Uh, Greenville, Tennessee. Yes, where is Greenville, Tennessee? Well, uh, that's uh, 72 miles north of Knoxville. Yes, sir. Who all is in your family, Hubert? Well, there's uh, just three of us, my mother, father, and myself. I see. What do they call you, Hubert? Or... Well, no, they call me. I go with my initials, H.C. H.C., okay. But well, what's your father's occupation? Uh, he's the manager of the Greenville bus station. I see. What... Uh... What uh, coach company is that? Uh, Tennessee Coach Company. I see. Well, before we go any further, we'd better give you a question, Hubert. Uh, Al, get me a question from the question bin, will you please, or Floyd? And then if you miss it, why, you must pay the consequences, okay? Uh, All right. Uh, The the gang around there, uh, fellas, uh, we better give them uh, an easy question, do you think, or a hard one? Let them have it, okay. (laughs) Here, uh, Harold uh, DeSellis of Aurora, Illinois, wants us to tell him... Why a lazy husband is like a Model T Ford. Truth or consequences, H.C. H.C. Smith. Hubert Smith. Uh... Not that H.C. Why is a lazy husband like a Model T Ford? Well, uh... You got all sorts of time. You got 20 seconds. 18 have gone by. 19, 20. That's all. (laughs) 
because they're both shiftless. Uh. Oh, man. I guess we got him, didn't we, gang? Well, you haven't told the truth, so you must pay the consequences. Now, your consequence, H.C., Hubert, is to pretend it's the night before Christmas in Greenville, Tennessee, your hometown. You're back there with the family and the gang doing everything you've always done. This is before you ever thought of the word paralyzed or hospital cot. Okay, hang on. We're really going back to Greenville. This is a preview of Christmas Eve in Greenville, Tennessee, H.C. I suppose the first thing we'd better look in on is the school party. Didn't the uh, high school usually hold a Christmas party the day before Christmas? Yes, uh, they usually did sometime this just before Christmas or before we got out on vacation. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, then. Here we go, boy. Alakazoo, Alakazam, school party at Greenville High. Here we am. There they are, H.C. Hey, gang. Hey, everybody. Every, hey, look. Listen, everybody. Look who's here. Here's Hubert Smith. Old H.C. is here for the annual Christmas party. Oh, uh, how does that sound, Hubert? Well, I haven't thought about those fellows in a long time. Boy, they're glad to see you. Say howdy to them. Hello, gang. They're really there, boy. You'll have to sort of give your names, you fellas there and girls at school. Give your names one at a time, Hubert, uh, so that uh, uh, we'll uh, recognize you, or at least H.C. will, just in case any of the guys have gotten fatter and the gal's prettier. Go ahead. Hello, H.C. Remember me? Who is it? Man, it's the Walker. Remember H.C.? I sure do. Well, don't get so anxious, boy. All right, next. Hello, Smitty. This is Parks. Remember the explosion Ms. Rimer's chemistry class? What do you say, Park? <laughs> Come on. Hello, H.C. This is Kathleen Bosswell. Remember me? Oh, you bet, Cat. The whole gang, boy. Hi there, H.C. Remember me, Maria Lamb. Why, well, hello, Marietta. Hi, H.C. This is J.W. Ramsey. How's tricks? Oh, same as always. Who's tricks, huh? Never mind. Hello, H.C. It's Cy Ramsey. What do you say, Cy? Yeah. H.C. It's Maurice. Remember those big football games we used to have? Oh, you bet. Well. Hello, H.C. This is Bill. Do you remember those park crackers that we used to shoot in the study hall? Uh. Okay, boy. Well, they, they all seem about the same, don't they, uh, H.C.? They sure do. Yeah, any of you get married since uh, since Hubert saw you last? Oh, yes, H.C. I'm getting married in the near future. Guess who I am? Well, that could be Kathleen Ambrose. Oh, you're exactly right. Well, you hit it right on the nose there. Well, who are you going to marry? Is that a question? Is that uh, Kathleen? Who are you going to marry? Uh, I'm marrying Jack Armitage. Do you remember him, H.C.? She yeah. always was a handful. Some of the, some, quite well, a bit. Some of the younger high. crop has crept in, you know. <laughs> We're uh, going to have to get running on. The, this magic spell only lasts to the end of Truth of Consequences tonight, and Hubert has a million things to do and a million people to talk to. So say goodbye, gang, here at the annual uh, school party at Greenville High School. Say, Smitty, this is your old principal, A.B. Gillen. You remember me? Oh, you bet. Uh, we just want you to know we are thinking of you all the time. The gang is all here and with a happy tear in their eyes for you. Hurry and get well. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Gillen. You bet it's Merry Christmas, fella, and a town full of friends proving it. But say, we better get floating over to the next place. Let's see, the night before Christmas in Greenville, Tennessee. What would you be doing, H.C.? Oh, my goodness, is, is all your Christmas shopping done? Hubert? No, I haven't thought anything about doing any this year. Man, did you, did you get a gift for your best girl? Well, not yet. What's uh, what's her name? Uh, Lila Morrell. Lila Morrell. Uh, do you love her? You bet. <laughs> Any uh, marriage uh, hopefulness there? Well, uh, I'm going to think about it seriously as soon as I get out of this bed. Yeah, boy. I knew there'd be some last-minute shopping to do. What, what do you want to get, Lila? How about a nice handkerchief or something like that, huh? Oh, uh, just for her? Why, she makes more than that. Well, yeah, but, I mean, we can get some. Maybe a handkerchief now, okay? Well, I'll settle for that, I guess. All right. Well, come on. Before the stores close here, we're right in front of George R. Lane's store here on Main Street. Let's go in, shall we? Right. Okay, boy, come on. We're entering the front door, really, of George R. Lane's in your hometown of Greenville, Tennessee. Ala Kazam! Now, let's get that handkerchief and get on here. 
Let's see, we're in the store now. Here's a counter where we ought to be able to get a handkerchief. Hello, you, you recognize this fellow? Well, Hubert Smith. I'm his son, Price. Remember me? Oh, yes. Remember my son, John? It's wonderful to see you, Hubert. Well, so oh, you want some of these you. pretty ones? For a girlfriend, I bet. Yeah, she, he wants one of the pretty ones. Yeah. What color do you like? Well, we'll make it uh, white silk one. White. White silk. You want something with lace or just plain? Well, uh, might as well make it lace. What size you wear? Now, wait a minute. What size? Isn't this the handkerchief counter? <laughs> oh, my, no. This is the lingerie count. Oh, for goodness sakes. Give us a pretty handkerchief and let's get out of here. Huh? H.C., say goodbye, boy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Hubert. Yes, sir. Let's get out on Main Street here. We'll hang on to Lila's present, the handkerchief, in case you see her. Here we are. Wonder who's around here on Main Street. Right on Main Street. Who's who's out on Main Street? Hello, Hubert. This oh. is Fuzzy Marr from the drugstore. It's good to see you. Do you re- remember Fuzzy uh, Morrow, Herbert? Oh, Hubert? you bet. Oh, it's great wait. to see you, Fuzzy. Wait a minute. Listen. Hear the church bells? You recognize that sound, Hubert? Those are really the church bells in Greenville, Tennessee. All this is in Greenville. This radio magic is real. Now, come on, let's get up to your church, huh? The Asbury Methodist Church. Here we are in the vestibule of the Asbury Methodist Church in Greenville, H.C. You still with me, huh? Yes. We're right here in, in the vestibule. Let, let's peek through the door and see who all is here tonight. You recognize any of these people, H.C.? There's Mr. and Mrs. Perry Lamb. You remember? Oh, I, I remember all these, several and, of these people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Bobby Phillips. Remember him? Oh, sure, but I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah. Well, let's go on in because Reverend Fleenor will speak right after the organ stops. Uh, come on. Come on in. Here we go. Hey, H.C.? Remember me? I'm Catherine Frazier. Catherine Frazier. Oh, hello, Catherine. Yeah, you kids shouldn't talk in church like this. Hey, H.C., Harry Thornton, remember, Pam? You bet. Yeah. And and look over there. Hello, H.C., this is Grandmother. <laughs> hello, Grandmother. Oh. Here's Granddad. Hello, H.C. Hi, Hi. Just a uh, Boy. Hello, I say. How are you? Who's that? Why, well, that's Linda. Yeah, boy. My name is Linda Louise Carter. Do you remember me? Sure. I'm sure he does. I'm sure the Reverend won't mind her talking like this. Oh, quiet, you folks. Reverend M. Guy Fleenor is going to speak. I have always thought about and preached about the joy of giving and how truly more blessed it is to give than to receive. But tonight I find a genuine reason for joy in receiving, in receiving back into our midst one of our dearest friends, Hubert Smith. And whether it is by radio's miracle or in our dreams, H.C. has never left our hearts. And in hundreds of churches all over the country, I'm sure all of us preachers, priests, rabbis, and spokesmen of all faiths look down at the seats where you boys used to sit and know in the deep of our hearts that the prayers which went with you into war will bring you back to us again to share the peace that you have made possible. H.C., It's good to have you with us. Did you hear what Reverend Fleenor said, Hubert? Sure did, Mr. Edwards. He meant you and he meant all the fellows listening in hospitals all over the country. But Alakazoo, Alakazam, and look where we are now on this magic trip, spending a preview of Christmas Eve in your old hometown. 
Al, uh, you may be in a ward in a veterans hospital at Long Beach, California, and I may be here on this stage in Hollywood at NBC, but everything else is in your hometown of Greenville, Tennessee. Everything is real, especially these old pals of yours. Look, they're over here on North Main Street, all lined up as if they were just waiting for you to join in the Christmas carols. Hi, gang! Hey! Hey! Now we're out here on Main Street. Who are, who are you caroling tonight? Uh, we're in front of Dr. Ms. Haskell Fox's home. Right in front of it. We'll ask the gang what they're going to sing, uh, H.C., so you can join in. What are, what are you going to sing tonight, gang? Hello, H.C. This is Eugenia Bewley, one of your seventh grade teachers out at Doak. One song you used to like best is Silent Night. Are you ready to lead us in it? Yeah, okay. I'll try. Yes, sir. Here we go, H.C. You started out, and your friends, 2,000 miles away, will join you in front of Dr. and Mrs. Fox's house there in Greenville. Here we go. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round and bright and mother and child. Beautiful, H.C., wasn't it, carolers? Oh! Yeah. Hello, H.C., this is Dr. Fox. This is Fox Jones, me and saying, that was swell. Merry Christmas. Welcome home. Oh, my goodness, I'm glad you reminded me, Dr. Fox. Home is right. I promised Hubert's mother and father I'd get him over to see them before the tree was trimmed. Now, here we go, right over to your house, H.C., Alakazam, and here we are. Uh, your folks are expecting us. Let, let me knock, though, just to warm them. Yeah. Anxious to talk to Mother and Dad? Sure I am. Well, I'll, I'll bet they're as excited as you are. How long since you've been home? Well, it's been several months now. About eight months, in fact. Yeah, they're certainly taking their time. Don't seem to answer. Why, look, Hubert, there isn't even a light on. Where do you suppose they are? Well, they might still be at the station. No, they said they would see... Oh, what's the matter with me? Of course, they're not in Greenville, Tennessee tonight. Do you know where they are, H.C.? Well, no, I haven't any idea, Mr. Edwards. They're right there outside the door of your ward in Long Beach Naval Hospital. Come in, Mother and Dad. Hello, H.C. Hello, H.C. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are they there, H.C.? I guess they are. I guess they're Yes, they're here. You bet. Well, goodness, there's Mother and Dad... H.C., we, we sort of pulled a switch on you there at the end. We really have been in Greenville with our microphones all night meeting your old friends. But when it came to Mom and Dad, we threw away the magic stuff and brought on the real thing. Your dad's boss, Mr. Al Kramer, even provided a substitute for both your mother and dad at the Tennessee Coach Company so they could come along. Are you happy, fella? I sure am, Mr. Yes, Edwards. sir. If you can't go to Christmas, Christmas will come to you. Mother, how does he look to you? Oh, he never looked better to me, you Mr. Bet. Edwards. All right. Well, I guess uh, you heard H.C. meeting all these friends and doing some late Christmas shopping. By the way, H.C., uh, what did you do with that handkerchief you bought, huh, fella? Huh? I you... still have it. Well, why don't you gi- Listen, why don't you give it to your fiance Lila Morell, huh? Go ahead oh, and give it to her. Because she's right there outside your door, too. Come in, Lila. Hello, H.C. Merry Christmas. Hello, Lila. Is that a surprise, H.C.? <laughs> Well, our hearts are with you, kids, who've been in love for a long time, and we know this Christmas will be a happy one for you. What do you do back in Greenville, Lila? I'm a telephone operator for the Intermountain Telephone Company, but the number that I want best is A.C. Well, you betcha. Mother and father and Lila, this reunion and your and Hubert's happiness, we mean for every veteran in veterans' hospitals all over the country tonight. This is your moment, too, fellas, because your parents and wives and children and sweethearts in their minds and hearts are thinking, that's me there with you. And that's what your hometown is thinking right now, too, boys. 
Small town, big city, that's what they're thinking. And don't think it's just at Christmas time either. It's every day. It's just that with all this talk about peace on earth at Christmas time, we wanted you to know in this special way that the peace you fought to give us, we're going to fight to keep. H.C., Mother and Dad, and Lila are here as our guests to spend the Christmas holidays with you. Uh, we, we have hotel reservations for them near the hospital there. And since we've pretended this is Christmas Eve, let us give you your present. You've got a swell future, Hubert. The courage that has brought you this far is the same courage that will see you through the future. Here to help that future is a $500 savings bond. Good luck. God bless you. Merry Christmas, H.C. Thank you, Mr. Rebels, and a very Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, boy. Good, Good night. Good night, Mr. Edwards. To engineer DeWitt Schultes and uh, Truth or Consequences producer Ed Bailey in Greenville, Tennessee's Church and School. To engineer Jim Hackett and producer Dick Lochran at Main Street and Lane Store, Greenville. To uh, engineer Joe Kay and uh, producer Fred Carney at Long Beach Naval Hospital. And to our studio and mixing engineer Johnny Pollock and producers Al Pascal and Floyd Holm here in Hollywood. To our Truth or Consequences organist Buddy Cole and church organist Ida Ripley in Greenville, Tennessee. And to all of Hubert's many friends in Greenville, Tennessee, who were so eager to pay this tribute to their pal, ship fitter third class, Hubert Smith, paralyzed from the neck down in Long Beach Naval Hospital. And all the veterans throughout the country are grateful thanks to you. Listen to this. The Walking Man. Who is the walking man? Keep listening to Truth or Consequences for the walking man. It may mean a gigantic prize to the one who knows. Who is the walking man? Hear all about it next week on Truth or Consequences. The walking man. Well, look who's dashing through the suds with jingle bells, too. <laughs> it's those happy does carolers and their merry washing machines. Greetings. D U Z, D U Z. Put does in your washing machine. Work clothes come out all so clean. White things white and colored things bright. D U Z does everything. From the roughest and the toughest to the whitest and the brightest. No so bright like does before. Does is different, does does more. When you does your wash, you think. D U Z does everything. D U Z. That was delightful, delightful kids. Yes, sir. And folks, now listen, the truth is, today's prices for used kitchen fats are higher. Much higher than last summer. Everybody save every drop of used fat. It's worth your while. This is Ralph Edwards speaking on behalf of our sponsor, the makers of Does, and wishing you a very Merry Christmas. And until next week, when you hear more about The Walking Man, a brand new gigantic prize contest, good night, everybody. Why has Hollywood star Merle Oberon switched to new, improved green shampoo? Because compared to dulling soap shampoos, this wonderful new green reveals up to 33% more sheen. Follow Merle's secret for shining hair. It's new green for Hollywood sheen. Improved green for Hollywood sheen. Your hair can have that Hollywood sheen. The very first time you use new green, get wonderful new green shampoo. New green. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Parker and Gamble, the makers of Doves. Ralph Edwards, too, for consequences, came to you from Hollywood, Long Beach, California, and Greenville, Tennessee. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.